Welcome to this video about the Xperia 1, the Xperia 1 Mark 2, the Xperia 5, the Xperia 5 Mark 2 and the Cinema Pro app. I saw some reviewers reviewing the Cinema Pro app on those devices and they had some issues with color grading and washed out colors and overblown highlights and so on. I want to address them in this video. First of all, what is the reason of this? Why does the image on my screen look so different to the outcome that I have in my video editor and then later on my computer? It's a simple reason. The Sony Xperia devices record in HLG HDR, which stands for Hyper Log Gamma, which is a format in which you can create high dynamic range videos. And high dynamic range videos allow you to have more of a range from the pure white to the darkest dark black color. And this is very handy if you want to color correct, color grade in movies for example. This is why it is used by default in Cinema Pro. And the problem is your Xperia device has an HDR screen so it will show you the preview as it is as it looks like on an HDR screen. You probably don't have an HDR screen on your computer. This is one issue. And the other issue is that the software that you're using is not able to convert this HDR into something visible on your non-HDR display. There are, for example, some exceptions as well, like the MPV program, which I use for Linux, for example, which is capable of just converting on the fly the HDR HLG video to SDR so I can watch it on my system. But how can I share this? If I upload the HDR HLG to YouTube directly without editing, no problem. YouTube will take care of it, even though not perfectly, as you might see when watching the video after conversion. But what can I do if I just want to use this video just like in an interview situation or in a vlog or something like this, what I do right now here, talking into the camera and for YouTube and want to add some fancy titles and so on, and I want to use it in a video editor. Most of the time, the video editors that you use don't have the support for HDR, HLG, especially those on the smartphone itself. So what you have to do is convert it from HDR to SDR, standard dynamic range that we usually have on our viewing devices. So this can be a bit cumbersome if you have to do it manually. You can do it manually in video editors. Just color grade, edit it. You can just also save a color profile in your video editor and use it later on. But not all of us want to do this. I want to just upload this video and that's it. So what I came up with is a nice conversion script. I use the FFmpeg library. FFmpeg is an open source video conversion tool or multimedia conversion tool which allows you to do some interesting settings like the HDR to SDR conversion. And I add some other parameter, par parameters here and there to make the, the contrast a bit punchier and the colors a bit punchier and so on. So to have a nice looking video. And the only thing that I need to do after I record this video is just put it on my computer, run the script on the file, it will create a new file for me with all the corrections uh, in SDR format so I can use this in my video editor to uh, edit some stuff uh, even further if I want to and just upload it to YouTube then. So what I want to show you right now is how to use the script. First of all, let me show you how it looks like with HLG HDR without uh, applying the script, basically, without converting it. This looks like this. And now after the conversion, you can see we have a bit more um, contrast. We have a bit not so washed out colors. I'm, my face looks a bit nicer, even though I have a gray shirt here and black shirt. Um, a gray jacket and black shirt, it, you will see the difference. And I will show you an example later on on my computer where we show you how you can do this on your computer. FFmpeg is a software that is available for Mac, for Windows, for Linux, 
I'm a Linux user, so I will show it you on Linux, but on Mac and on Windows it works pretty much the same. You have to install the application and then open a terminal to run it and have all those para parameters. parameters. And of course I have the option to create a script and just simply uh, run the script on my video and I will show you how this works as well. I created a little script to show you this. So let's go to the computer and let's take a look at the script and I also show you the parameters that you can change to create the look that you desire because I'm now showing you my look that I desire but you might have yeah, different taste in terms of colors do you want more saturated colors do you want to more desaturated colors do you want to more uh, gamma more uh, highlights do you want to more contrast all of this can be configured uh, simply in this script and i will show you how to do this right now so let's take a look so here's the command that i use as you can see i'm not using the inbuilt ffm pack that i uh, that comes with my Linux distribution pre-installed. I just downloaded a static ffmpeg build that I'm using here. And I'm executing the ffmpeg command uh, minus i for input. Then I give it uh, the parameter for my first video file. In this case, because it's a script, I say take the first parameter that I put in here. And uh, then uh, the video filter that I'm using is the Z scale filter and the important values here are those here like the format and the tone map conversation until here and the rest is something that you can change as well but you can see here Z scale is used for a BT 709 or a rec 709 conversion as well and the format is uh, also known so this video filter is basically what you need as special parameter everything else is what you can set up the way you like it so for example by default the cinema pro app creates an lib x265 video but i want to convert it to lib x264 this equals to larger file size so if you don't like this you can of course change this to x265 then I'm using a quality of 10 here. You can of course increase this or decrease this depending on your situation. And of course the preset you can also uh, change this to fast if you want to have like a better quality. But I usually tend to use the ultra fast one because I don't see much of a quality difference. And for the smartphone video I think it doesn't matter so much. And then we have our second argument, which is the output file that I use here. So what I can do now in a terminal is simply open up the terminal. I can execute this script, uh, script.sh, and give it an input name, which will be my uh, morph something movie file and I can say output.mp4 and it will then start rendering the clip. And I can demonstrate to you how this will look like with an example crib, uh, clip that I have here under my download section. First of all let's play this in VLC and you will see that the colors are washed out, contrast is a bit missing and overall the exposure doesn't seem right. If I stop here you can see it's washed out it's the contrast is missing and yeah it's not the way i want it to look like after conversion however let me go to the first file here what i have then is a way better file let me open up this with mpv you can see boosted colors compare this by putting the vlc and MPV right next to each other and you can see the same scene here overblown highlights overblown colors missing details on the left and we have this back on the right but you can also see the colors are different here in the sky especially this is a real blue and this is more like mm, very light blue then of course we have another trick 
uh, we have the option to change the way we want our look to look like. So this is the LUT1 basically where I have the desaturation set to 2. There's another LUT you can see here, LUT2, where I have desaturation set to 0. So what I'm using what I'm using right now to get a more punchy color. So let me um, show you a comparison between this one and this one. Oops. Again, this one and this one. So with a few tweaks you can see that I get a bit more punchy colors on the LUT2 version in comparison to the LUT1 version which seems to be yeah have desaturated colors as you can see here and this one has more punchy colors I like the more punchy look but depending on what the desaturation uh, um, the desaturation uh, option parameter in the script so deset to zero for the look on the right and the situation to 2 for the look on the left. You can see the color is more blue in the sky here. Here it is more desaturated. It's not so blue. And the same goes for the green grass. It is not so green here as it is here. So these are the parameters you can change. If you have a scene which is like too bright still, what you can also do is go into the script and change the gamma. By default, you can see I'm already lowering the gamma, so I have lowered it to 0.7 here. Usually it's 1.0. And if you want to lower it more, you can do so as well. This was a very bright sunny day, so I wanted to, it to be a bit lower to get more contrast out of it. But I can also raise the gamma here if I want to, or leave it at 1.0, depending on the situation that you recorded the video on, and also depending on the ISO and the shutter speed you chose. You have to lower down or raise the gamma here. But I think 0 0.7 is most of the time, if you choose the right exposure on the system, on the Cinema Pro app itself, then this is the best that you can get. I will put this command of course in the description so you can just use and copy it. Of course for Windows or Mac you have to adapt the path to FFmpeg and uh, FFmpeg I think on Windows is a ffmpeg.exe file. So this is the, uh, this. Then let's check out how does my version I put it now on the right with LUT1 for example, compete with the original uh, one um, shown by FFmpeg. So let's go in here, uh, uh, shown by uh, MPV. So let's, let's take a look at the original file with the color correction or HDR conversion in MPV, which also is way better than uh, it is in um, in the original um, in the which is way better than the uh, original um, look of VLC. So let's pause here to see an overview. And as you can see here, we have a little bit more desaturated colors. I think on the right, a little bit darker clouds. You can see here it's more high contrasty. The white is more white, here it's more beige. Uh, we can check and compare it with the LUT2, which is a bit more punchier color, to see if this is more what uh, we see here. A bit more, I think the color is still a bit off. You can see it's a bit darker. Also because the gamma is a bit uh, down and you can see the color difference here. This is like a very very soft green and this is like a punchy green on the right. So there is a difference but it's no different in comparison to the way how it will look like uh, with the VLC without color grading, without conversion of the HDR format. As you can see here this is like completely washed out colors and uh, 
they, we don't even see the blue in comparison to the one and it's the same file as you can see here just that MPV has the option to uh, play it back in HDR and uh, auto, auto apply a lot uh, conversion here so this is I think enough for the demonstration and enough for um, yeah, telling you <laughs> what to do. So I will post this FFmpeg command in the comment section, uh, in the description, and you can then comment if you have like other FFmpeg commands that you use for converting your Cinema Pro videos into uh, SDR format to convert and use them in your uh, video editor. Of course, after this conversion is done, if you don't want to use the gamma, for example, you can just leave it out. Just copy this. Just leave it out if you don't want to and you can use the gamma correction and color correction saturation and desaturation you can also leave out and do this all in video in post production in your video editor it's also possible but this is the one that I would recommend you uh, to convert first because then it is way easier to um, adjust little things in the video that you want to have changed that's everything for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a like, subscribe. Thanks for watching and until the next time, bye.